Hello, I am Luis Nuño. I am a professor in the area of signal theory and communications at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And now I am going to explain you a research work I performed during years 2006 and 2007, which I call the harmonic wheel. Music has two different aspects. One deals with creativity, aesthetics, performance, etc. And the other one is a technical, even mathematical side, which includes intervals, scales, keys, chords, arpeggios, etc. This technical part of the music is usually learned by heart, and normally when one is a child. After finishing the learning of music, one has many independent concepts without any logical relationship among them. And also, one is used to work with keys having few accidentals in the key signature. The objective of this work is to structure the technical side of music in a scientific way. To do it, we have to find which are the basic principles of music. This is a very hard task, but the results are very easy to understand. From my point of view, the basic principles in Western music are three. First, the concept of octave and its division into 12 parts. It means that we use 12 musical notes. Second, the concept of consonants for combinations of two and three notes, that is consonant intervals and consonant chords. And third, the concept of major scale or major key, which is a set of seven notes showing great affinity among them. Now, I am going to represent these basic principles graphically. Here we have the 12 musical notes sorted out by their pitch. But now we want to represent them in such a way that we can see the consonant relationships among them. So if we start with note C, here we have the perfect fifths intervals from C on the horizontal axis, notes F and G. In one oblique direction we have the major thirds, notes A flat and E, and on the other oblique direction, we have the minor thirds, A and E flat. We can complete these consonant relationships with the notes around C, as we can see here. The next step is to represent the three note consonances, that is, major and minor chords. In this graph, we can see six triangles. Each of them has three notes at its vertices, which form a consonant chord. Those chords are represented here. Note C can belong to a major or minor chord as the root, the third or the fifth. So we have six possibilities, which are the six chords represented here. Now we are going to extend this process to every note. And we obtain an infinite figure, which I call the harmonic plane. In this figure, we can choose a region containing only once the 12 major and minor chords, like this. And in this region, we still have to represent the major scale. By repeating this region infinite times, we will obtain the harmonic plane. So we select this region and we mark the notes of the C major scale. The tonic is in a rectangle and the other notes in circles. We can rectify this figure and we obtain a very interesting result, which is that the major scale is represented by a rectangle. There are three notes marked outside the rectangle, but they are in fact repeated on the rectangle. In this rectangle, we have exactly the six consonant chords associated to the C major scale. C major, F major, G major, and A minor, D minor, E minor. There is a strong symmetry between the major and minor chords, which allows us to define the A minor key as the relative of the C major. From now on, we can also consider any major or minor chord as the center of a key. So now we assign the corresponding key signature to any pair of a major chord and its relative minor. Remember that we have to repeat this figure infinite times to obtain the harmonic plane. But in the vertical direction, it is not necessary because 
at the top, we have the same notes as at the bottom. So if we go upwards, when we reach the, the top, we can continue from the bottom in a cyclic way. On the contrary, in the horizontal direction, we need to put 12 intervals, which are perfect fits, until we complete a cycle. So now we are going to put 12 intervals in the horizontal direction and then we will bend the figure to convert the lines into circumferences and we obtain what I call the harmonic wheel. To implement in practice this result, which we can see here, we use two rotating discs, one being cardboard and the other plastic. On the cardboard disc I printed out the notes, the intervals and the consonant codes. And on the plastic disc I printed out the blue lines representing the major scale. So by rotating these discs we can choose any major scale. This is the final aspect of the harmonic wheel where I included not only the major scales and its relative nature minor, but also the harmonic minor and melodic minor scales. So the basic characteristics of the harmonic wheel are each note is connected with the six notes with which it forms consonant intervals. Surrounding each note there are the six consonant chords containing it. Surrounding each consonant chord there are the three notes composing it, that is, its arpeggio. And for every major scale, we obtain the six consonant chords associated to it. There are other two important characteristics. One of them is the map of the keys. If we move along a circular line, we find a cycle of fifths, as we can see here, both for major chords and minor chords. But here we cannot see the close relationship between C major and C minor, for example. But if we move along a radial line, we find it. Here we can see C minor, C major is relative, A minor is parallel, A major, etc. In fact, this group of eight chords is known as a pair of Bella Bartok's axes. We can also move along a spiral line, which we, where we find chords at major third apart. This uh, progressions, of course, were widely used in jazz by the great saxophonist John Coltrane. If we want to harmonize a melody, for example in C major, we can use three note chords, that is triad chords, or we can use also four notes chords or tetrad, which are mm, usually known as seventh chords. On the plastic disc, I also included, included the seventh chord. So I printed a Roman numeral indicating the degree of the scale and then a symbol indicating the seventh. So here we have the seventh chord in C major. As conclusions, I explained the development of the harmonic wheel which is based on three basic principles. Twelve notes, consonances of two and three notes, that is major and minor chords, and the major scale. We found two important characteristics in this wheel, which are the map of the keys, which is a panoramic view of all the relationships among the keys. Not only the cycle of fifths, but also the relative and parallel keys, and also keys and major third apart. The other important characteristic is the core finder, which allows us to obtain the cause associated to any major or minor key, including natural, harmonic and melodic. So this is a powerful tool for the comprehension of music theory and harmony. You can find all the information on the webpage harmonicwheel.com. Thank you very much for your attention.